What's going on everyone? My name is John Solo and today I've got a Star Wars theory that I think you guys are really going to enjoy because it answers a question that Star Wars fans have been asking since the release of The Force Awakens. It's not one of the main questions. We're not discussing the identity of Rey's parents or which Jedi, Sith, or member of Max Rebo's band Supreme Leader Snoke is the reincarnation of, though I'm still pulling for Droopy McCool. Instead, we're talking about Starkiller Base because there's still some mystery surrounding it. We know that the First Order Super weapon is incredibly powerful, powerful enough to destroy entire star systems, multiple planets at once. But we still don't know what planet the weapon was on, or that is we didn't until now. According to this theory, Starkiller Base is on Ilum. So let's dive into why exactly we think that. The catalyst for this idea started with a tweet from the official Star Wars Twitter account. They tweeted this image with some information about Starkiller Base, saying that it was once a little known planet rich in energy focusing kyber crystals and that some of those crystals were used to power the Death Star's lasers. At first glance, this image doesn't really seem like anything special, however you can actually reach some really interesting conclusions about Starkiller Base from it. First off, it's a planet that had a high concentration of kyber crystals that the Empire exploited. Second, the planet is not well known to the galaxy at large and could even be considered a military secret. And then for my favorite bit, the planet belonged to the Empire before it belonged to the First Order. From here, we're going to take a look at the recently released novel Ahsoka. Just a heads up, this next bit will contain some very minor spoilers. In the book, Ahsoka visits the planet Ilum to gather some crystals for her new lightsabers. As she exits hyperspace and approaches the planet, she sees that the Empire is already stationed on it. Not only that, but she also sees that there's a huge mining operation taking place where they're drilling away a large portion of the planet. Ahsoka even says that she can see the magma from the planet's core. That last bit is particularly interesting to me because it backs up the Wikipedia page for Ilum that says that the damage the Empire did to the planet was visible all the way from space where Ahsoka was observing it from. It also matches a description of what could be Starkiller Base. A large portion of the planet completely drilled away, deep enough to connect to the planet's core, and again Again, visible from space. You're seeing the connections, right? Another similarity I want to focus on is the fact that both Starkiller Base and Ilum are relatively unknown to the majority of the galaxy. Outside of the Jedi who use the planet for gathering kyber crystals, no one of any other affiliation mentions Ilum in any canon source. We can assume that the only reason the Empire knew about it is because of Anakin leaving the Jedi Order to join them. He easily could have given the information to someone like Palpatine or Tarkin when they expressed the need for kyber crystals to power the Death Star. And it would also make sense for the First Order, the second coming of the Empire, to use a planet that so few people know about, such as Ilum, to house their super weapon. We should also take a look at the landscape of both planets because this seems to be the main point that people who disagree with the theory cling to. This is because the two planets have what appears to be two different landscapes, at least at first glance. Taking only what we've seen of Ilum into account, you'd assume that pretty much the entire planet is covered in snow and ice. Meanwhile, Starkiller Bay seems to have both mountains and forests in addition to the snow and ice. So if you don't want to believe this theory, there's your way out. There are a few possible explanations for this though. Like when you take into account the fact that the Empire did a massive amount of damage to the planet. They exposed its core, they released magma, and as a result, they likely changed the environmental properties of the planet. A warmer climate absolutely could have made the planet more hospitable for plant life. Now here on Earth, there's no way that the forests we see on Starkiller Base could have grown in just a few decades. But it's Star Wars, it's science fantasy. We don't know the species of the trees or how fast they grow. But because that debate could branch off in about a dozen different directions, pun sort of intended, I'd rather focus on the possibility that maybe there already was plant life on Ilum, we just didn't see it in the brief amount of time we spent there. It's not like we explored the entire planet, you know? For all we know, there could easily be a forest or some other form of plant life off screen. Realistically, there's oxygen on the planet, so there has to be something out there, and nothing negates the idea that they could have just landed in a particularly barren area. I would even argue that it makes sense we've only seen the really harsh icy conditions because that's where the Jedi probably established themselves to stay hidden. Also, when you compare the view of the planets from space, their landscape looks pretty similar, even when you take into account that these images are technically around 50 years apart. And now, I've got one final bit of evidence I want to share, and in my opinion, it's the most conclusive. For those who don't know, the Star Wars galaxy is divided up into nine different regions. Starkiller Base and Ilum both reside in the same region, what is called the Unknown Regions. 
On this Canon map, you can actually see the exact origin point of Starkiller Base. This is where the planet was initially when the First Order started their construction. The important part comes next. I'm going to show you the exact same map with an old Canon map placed over top of it, so you can see just how close Ilum and Starkiller Base are to each other. As you can see, the consistency of both maps is almost perfect. Just about everything is in the exact same spot on both of them. Everything, including Ilum and Starkiller Base. Now remember, this is a one-dimensional simplified map of an entire galaxy, something that's anything but one-dimensional. The two planets could simply be floating right over each other just light years apart. That being said, don't you think this just works out a little too perfectly? Both planets are rich in kyber crystals, were exploited by the Empire, have similar landscapes, and reside not just in the same region of the galaxy, but directly on top of each other. And to top it all off, according to Ahsoka Tano, there is no place in the entire galaxy that the Jedi hold more sacred. How perfect would it be for Supreme Leader Snoke and the First Order to turn that sacred place into a super weapon? And now I want to hear what you guys think. Do you believe in this theory? Do you not? If not, what planet do you think Starkiller Base could be on? Leave your opinions in a comment down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, remember to click that like button, share this video with any Star Wars fans you know, and subscribe for weekly Star Wars content. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. My name is John Solo, and may the Force be with you.